Hello, this is Mr. Buss, and this video is going to go over the biomolecules activity for AP Biology. Okay, here we go. So, I'm just going to use my iPad uh, as the lab up on it. So, um, some of the main concepts in this activity is that we're going to be going through dehydration synthesis reactions. Those are described on page uh, 24 of the Principles of Life book, and um, each of the um, biomolecules from carbohydrates to lipids to nucleic acids and proteins is going to have a dehydration synthesis reaction illustrated where smaller molecules like these sugar molecules for instance are being put together and uh, forming new covalent bonds and releasing water molecules. So here we go, uh, carbohydrates number one, uh, place two glucose molecules directly next to each other on your desk, take a picture, well uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through the rest of this before you maybe take a screenshot or something. But uh, label each glucose molecule. All right. So even though these are different colors, pieces of paper, they're, they're both glucose molecules. They're identical. Uh, so these are monosaccharides, meaning mono meaning one, and saccharides are sugars. Also, just anything ending in os, like glucose, suco, sucrose, fructose, and so on, those are also sugars. All right. Uh, number the carbon atoms for each glucose molecule. So uh, there are six carbon atoms, and they each have an assigned number. Uh, so I'm going to start with the one on the right here, and then we go down and up. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is also in your book on page... 25. I'll do this one as well. Okay. And then circle the H and OH atoms that will be used to form water, resulting in a new glycosidic bond. So when these two glucose molecules are stuck together, you know, you're going to need probably an enzyme for that to facilitate that, but either way, when these are stuck together, uh, these are the two, uh, these are the hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen atoms that will be removed. So at this point, this would be a good place to do a screenshot or picture, and then that could go on your write-up for number one for carbohydrates. Number two, join or bond the glucose molecules together. So I'm going to fold these over. All right, so the H and the OH got folded over. Oops. And then I'm left with uh, the two glucose molecules now covalently bonded. That bond right there between this carbon atom and this oxygen atom is the new glycosidic bond. Okay. And the water molecule is formed as a result of the H and the OH that got folded over there. So dehydration synthesis reaction, two monomers, or in this case monosaccharides, got put together and released a water molecule. So water was formed as a result. And now we have no longer glucose, we have the sugar maltose. Number three on the write-up sketch, what it would look like if you joined five of these together. Uh, in the book on page 26, it kind of shows this in the upper right hand corner showing glucose molecules and then uh, starch is gonna end up branching off uh, at various locations. So it's not just a linear molecule. Uh, cellulose is another polymer, poly meaning many. Uh, sugars put together, starch, and then glycogen also is an example of a polymer glycogen being stored in our livers. Okay, so that is the first one, the, the carbohydrate questions. Where do our bodies get the sugars we need to live? That's not in the book, but that's just, you know, like uh, starches, potatoes, rice, grains, breads, those types of things. Uh, what is an example of a monosaccharide? Well, glucose was a monosaccharide. Disaccharide would be when they're put together and you form maltose. Uh, and a polysaccharide, again, starch, glycogen, cellulose. Number three, what is the chemical formula for glucose? 
uh, glucose is, if you counted them up, you could you count it up. How many carbon atoms are there? There's six carbon atoms, so C6. How many hydrogen atoms? There's 12, H12. And how many oxygen atoms? If you counted those up, it would be six. So glucose is C6H12O6, and it's considered a hexose because it has six carbons. And again, this dehydration synthesis for number four forms water. What is the name for the opposite reaction? Opposite of a dehydration synthesis reaction. On page 24, it shows a dehydration synthesis reaction. Uh, unfortunately, it uses a different term. It calls it condensation. Uh, so AP Biology calls these dehydration synthesis reactions. The textbook calls them condensation. It's the same thing. But the opposite would be a hydrolysis. So dehydration synthesis or condensation, we're taking small molecules, putting them together, releasing water, forming larger molecules. Hydrolysis, we're breaking apart those larger molecules, releasing energy and uh, using up water. Okay. Uh, what is the functional group of the glucose molecule? So if I just look at an individual glucose molecule and I look for functional groups on page 23, the functional group that glucose has is an OH, and it has several of them. And OH is a hydroxyl group. Other than glucose, and so here's like an OH, here's a hydroxyl, 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 hydroxyl. Other than glucose, what's an example of a carbohydrate monomer? Other monomers of sugars would be like ribose, deoxyribose. Uh, they're listed here also, fructose, mannose, galactose. There's lots of different examples um, on page 25. And other than starch, what's another example of a carbohydrate polymer? Again, uh, cellulose and glycogen are other examples of carbohydrate polymers. All right, so we finished up the carbohydrate section. Let's move on to the lipid section. Okay, here are my lipid monomers. This is glycerol. And these are fatty acids. Uh, these are saturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids. Saturated meaning they're saturated with uh, hydrogen. There's a lot of hydrogen going around. There's a carboxyl group here, of course, but the carbon chain is saturated with hydrogen. Here's an unsaturated fatty acid because it has a carbon to carbon double bond in the middle of it, causing a kink or a bend. So this is unsaturated. fatty acid. Okay, so there's the glycerol and the three fatty acid molecules. Make sure one is unsaturated, two are saturated. Place the glycerol and the fatty acids next to each other, showing where the new bonds will form. All right, this is as close as I can get them. And take a picture. So uh, before you do that, maybe I'll circle again. This is the hydrogen and the OH that is going to be removed to form the water molecule there, here, and here. So that's number one. Go ahead and screenshot that. Number two, join them together. So we're gonna do the same process here. We're gonna fold over the hydrogen molecules of the glycerol, leaving the oxygens. And here we're gonna fold over the hydroxyl group, the OH group which gets removed. And that's gonna form three water molecules and leave three new covalent bonds. Remember covalent means sharing all right, circle the new covalent bonds. There's one, there's two, and there's three. And now this new molecule, uh, which is composed of a glycerol and three fatty acids, two being saturated, one being unsaturated, is called a triglyceride, because tri meaning there's three of these. Okay, go ahead and screenshot that for the second part of lipids, lipid questions. Where do our bodies get the lipids we need to live? Uh, from any fatty foods, oils and such. 
what functional groups are present on the glycerol. So let's break this apart again and take a look. Glycerol had three OHs. And remember on page 23 that OH is a hydroxyl functional group. The fatty acids had a C double bonded to an O and an OH. So that functional group is a carboxyl functional group, C double bonded to an O and an OH. The R group is just meaning that it's a carbon something, right? So here's the R group. Here's the functional group on the fatty acid. What is the difference between saturated and unsaturated fatty acids? What's the difference between these two? Unsaturated fatty acids have a carbon to carbon double bond somewhere and saturated do not. Is a triglyceride molecule considered hydrophobic or hydrophilic? All right, when this is put together like this, all right, water molecules, which are polar, are not gonna interact with this, okay? So it is considered a uh, hydrophobic molecule. An example of a lipid monomer, glycerol, saturated, and unsaturated fatty acids. Those are all monomers. Number seven, how are phospholipids and triglycerides similar and different? Well, phospholipids, let's turn to the lipids page here. Phospholipids on page 28 have a hydrophobic region, which has a positive and negative charge. And so that is going to be water loving. And it also then has a hydrophobic hydrocarbon tail. And so uh, that is kind of how they're similar and different there. They're similar because they have uh, fatty acid hydrophobic regions, but different because they have a hydrophilic region as well. What structures are phospholipids used to build? They're used to build uh, lipid bilayers. So your cell membranes, your plasma membrane, kind of use the different words mean the same thing, are made up of these uh, phospholipids. So that is lipids. Moving on to nu nucleic acids then.